Welcome to this tutorial from the Gaston College Writing Center that will answer the question we are all asking, where do the commas go? But first, before we answer that pressing question, let's ask another. Why does it even matter if I insert commas in my sentences? One reason why commas matter is that they can change the meaning of a sentence. Let's take a quick look at some well-known examples of commas changing the intended meaning. Let's eat grandma versus let's eat grandma. In the first sentence, grandma is in danger of being eaten. And in the second sentence, that comma means that grandma's life is not at risk. She is simply being invited to dine. In a similar manner, the sentence, we're going to learn to cut and paste kids, puts the lives of our children at risk. But a comma indicates that they'll be learning to cut and paste something other than themselves. The lesson here is that commas save lives. Have you heard this one? Most of the time, travelers worry about their luggage. If we remove that comma, most of the time travelers worry about their luggage, we no longer have the average commuter concerned about their luggage. We now have time travelers worrying if their suitcases are going to cross the time and space continuum. Clearly, commas can drastically change the meaning of a sentence. Now that we're convinced of the importance of commas in communicating our intended meaning, where do they go in our sentences? It's a common myth that we should insert a comma every time we take a breath. Sometimes a reader may take a breath where a comma should not go. For example, you should not use a comma to separate the subject from the verb, even though there may seem like a pause there. Commas in the wrong places can break a sentence into illogical segments or confuse readers with unnecessary and unexpected pauses. This sentence is punctuated incorrectly. An 18-year-old in North Carolina is considered an adult. Placing a comma where we may take a slight breath in a sentence may lead to another error, the dreaded comma splice. I met Tyler. We went to a 7 o'clock movie. A comma splice is where we've joined two complete sentences with only a comma, but that is not correct. A comma is not strong enough to hold together two complete sentences. That is the job of a period or a semicolon. While it is true that commas help create a brief pause in a sentence, there are actually a few simple rules you can learn to begin using commas more logically and consistently than that old myth. Use commas to separate complete sentences when they are joined by any of these seven coordinating conjunctions. And, but, for, or, nor, so, yet. I want to eat dinner out this evening, but there is no dining out money left in my budget. It was raining, so my dog refused to go outside. On either side of the conjunction, you need to identify a main subject and a verb to determine if you are connecting two complete sentences. If they are complete sentences on either side, you need a comma before that coordinating conjunction. Here is an example of when a comma is not needed before a conjunction. Liam plans to spend spring break visiting Ireland and Scotland. Scotland is not a complete sentence by itself. Ireland and Scotland are compound objects of the verb plans, so you should not place a comma before the and in this sentence. We turned on some music and begin to study. This is called a compound predicate. The subject we is still the same for the verbs turned and began, so no comma would go before the conjunction and in this sentence. Use commas after introductory clauses, phrases, or words that come before the main clause or complete sentence. Common starter words for introductory clauses that should be followed by a comma include after, although, as, because, if, since, when, while. While I was eating, the dog begged for my food. Because her car had a flat tire, she was late for work. However, don't put a comma after the main clause when a dependent clause follows it, except for cases of extreme contrast. This sentence is punctuated incorrectly. The baby cried during his nap time. Here's a correctly punctuated sentence. He was calm, although he had missed his flight. This comma use is correct because it is an example of extreme contrast. 
Common introductory phrases that should be followed by a comma include participial and infinitive phrases, absolute phrases, non-essential appositive phrases, and long prepositional phrases, which means they are over four words long. Having completed her degree program, she applied for jobs. Common introductory words that should be followed by a comma include however, therefore, and furthermore. However, you may need to give the room a second coat of paint. Use a pair of commas in the middle of a sentence to set off clauses, phrases, and words that are not essential to the meaning of the sentence. Use one comma before to indicate the beginning of the non-essential element, and one at the end to indicate the end of the non-essential element. You can think of these commas as bookends, one on either side. Ask yourself these questions to decide if the clause, phrase, or word is essential to the meaning of your sentence. If you leave it out, does the sentence still make sense? Does it interrupt the flow of words in the original sentence? If you move it to a different position in the sentence, does the sentence still make sense? If you answer yes to one or more of these questions, then the element in question is non-essential and should be set off with commas. Here are some example sentences with non-essential elements. Next Monday, which happens to be my birthday, is the date of my jury summons. The cafe downtown makes excellent food. The service, on the other hand, is rather poor. Hershey's chocolate is good. When it comes to creaminess, however, Cadbury is far better. Do not use commas to set off essential elements of the sentence, such as clauses beginning with the word that. The documentary that I borrowed from you is fascinating. She thinks that she will be able to travel to the coast for spring break. Here are examples of other essential elements that do not need commas. Students who cheat only harm themselves. The candidate who had the most money won the election. And here are more examples of non-essential elements that need to be set off with commas. Matthew, who often cheats, is just harming himself. The Republican Party candidate, who had the most money, won the election. Use commas to separate a series of three or more words, phrases, or clauses. The Microsoft Office suite includes Word, Excel, Outlook, Access, and PowerPoint. Use a comma to shift between the main discourse and a quotation. Maya Angelou wrote, If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Use commas wherever necessary to prevent possible confusion or misreading. In the lab, rats are used for testing products.